uh, work, I will cut out the original. So, um, so there I was, right? No pants in front of everybody. Whoa, hey, folks. Wait, no pants. I'm sorry, oh guys. God. Story for another day because we are live. We got, we got five minutes. You sure you want to talk about this one? <laughs> no pants. I know, folks. We're live. I'm your host, Dash V. Uh, we got a special guest with us today. Um, he's from a game that some people think is kind of a pretty big deal. So, I mean, I, I have Jeremy with me today. Uh, Jeremy, have you? Uh, have, do you know about this Ace Combat Seven game? I'm talking about it. Sure, if I've heard of the series before. I thought it was Air Combat Seven. I thought that's what it was called. Uh, the original is called Air Combat, though, so it's funny you oh, well, say that. Oh, well, that's what I thought it was in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeremy, do you want to introduce our special guest? Oh. Yes, today we have Kevin M. Conley, voice actor. Hello, everybody. Of many things, including Ace Combat 7. Yes. Yes, finally. Finally can talk about it. Sonia, thank you so much. Sonia, I can always count on you. To join us, to join us. Thank you so much, Sonia, there in the chat. Um, we're with Kevin M. Connolly from Ace Combat 7, uh, amongst many other things. But today, yeah. specifically, we're going to talk about Ace Combat 7. So, uh, because we had you on the show a while back. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I believe, like, when I went back and reviewed the footage, um, it was super fun. We talked about a lot of the other projects that you'd done uh, yes. prior to Ace Combat 7. And um, that was partly because we want to get a full, well-rounded view of who you were and what you'd done. Um, mm. But it was also because you're you're a little bit under like, mm, can't talk, right? I was at the time, and I I, I did get into a tiny little bit of trouble. Um, oh. but, uh, uh, I don't know how they found it, but boy, uh, um, <laughs> uh, let's just say I, I had a little bit of a talking to. But everything's cool. I because of that. Was. So when you actually asked me uh, the other day. Uh, because I was at a I was at a party. I was finally I'm I'm in a I'm in a Lego show called Lego Friends 2018 that just got released on you well released in November. And we had a little rap party, even though we just started recording season three. And I went to the one of the casting directors, one of the uh, production managers, I said, Hey, can I talk about Ace Combat Seven yet? Because it's coming out in a few days. And they're like, No, nope, not yet. You know, we'll tell you. And so when you asked me, I said, Well, damn, I was gonna email and and so I emailed and like within 10 seconds I said, Yes, you can talk about it now. I was like, oh, okay. Very <laughs> good. Well, I'm glad that you're still talking to us, even though apparently we're bad influences. <laughs> oh, it's all good. You know, because it was funny. So I thought about you guys and, and about all that. You know, the secrecy these days is, you know, obviously important. But some of the, the you know, the lengths that they go to now. And in fact, oh, yeah. I took a video game, um, a great video game workshop with a, a husband and wife team. We do like all the Call of Duties and Medal of Honor. They do all the voice directing for that. And they were talking about how, you know, they always tell their their clients and their students and their actors saying, don't talk about anything at all. Because they even had one situation where like three actors all just happened to post a picture saying, I'm in the studio recording something. That's all they said. But because right. it was a three of them in the same week and they were the leads in another game together, everybody knew all automatically what game it was. And so, gotcha. you know, they said, you know, don't, take pictures don't talk you know that's why it's called a nda non-disclosure agreement gotcha. and, and i got into and it's the second time i got in trouble years and years and years ago at funimation i was trying to be sneaky and i wasn't very sneaky and i got caught so gotcha uh, but well, there we are but now i can talk about it yes it's out i'm very excited i want to pick it up for xbox myself so we'll see excellent so xbox is going to be your platform of choice on that one that is my yeah xbox is uh uh is my platform of choice yes you have the one x or you just have the the xbox one the xbox one yeah uh, okay. i think it'll still be a good experience i think so too yeah i mean i even if i had the xbox one i don't have a, a 4k tv yet uh, i love i love 3d and they don't make them anymore and i got my 3d tv and it's, it's hard to hard to give up you know i i too i have a 3d tv in the other room um yeah. And, uh, you know, for some of the games, Shadow of the Colossus and things like that, like the, the 3D games, I thought the movies, not so much, but the games I really got into in 3D. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I have a quick question um, for you, Kevin. Yes. Did you get a chance to play with the VR on Ace Combat? Oh, no, no. I, I, haven't, uh, even, I haven't seen the game in person at all. I mean, so because when we record it, you know, everything else, we're, all we're doing is the voices. I mean, I get to see nothing. I was hoping uh, you get a chance. Like, hey, you want to try the VR on this thing? 
Yeah, no, not so much. That's a whole separate division. We're just the we're just the peons that talk into a microphone and pretend we're apparently I'm, I'm already hated, which is kind of I guess I did my oh, job. Really? I did Who, are you? Who are you? I play a I, I'm I am a wax band dog. I'm one of the what? guys. I do it. I do it. I'm, I'm band dog, and I get to tell you that you're a jerk, and that you know what? He's the, kind you know, of an he, asshole. Not, I don't care. He's not kind of. He is an asshole, and I love it. I found some. I found a couple of uh, things on YouTube, a couple of comments saying, "Oh my God, band dog sucks," you know. And then it's like, "Yeah, I did my job." Right. Uh, and then just today, I read there's there's a guy that's been uploading like just hours of gameplay since it came out. And somebody said, "Man, is is AWOX Band Dog the best AWOX we've had?" I'm like, "Yeah, I am. What are you talking about? You know." So, I mean, there's a few. Wait, others. I want to explain what AWOX. AWOX is pretty much oh, yeah. the guy who's telling you what to do. He's right. telling you, "Okay, you need, attack, you need to do this mission," and he talks to you through the game. Uh, I don't want to say too much of spoiler alerts, but yeah, he's kind of an asshole in this game. The AWOX yeah, is. yeah, no, it, it was a lot of fun to play. You know, um, as it was. Talking before we before we went live, you know, I was looking up just my timeline again. I mean, I auditioned for this game in 2016. Wow! And uh, over about a year and a half, you know, went in for about three, I think, three sessions total, and just you know, I think it was like I don't know, 1,800 lines of dialogue I had to record. So yeah, because he's pretty active in the game. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's brutal. That I mean, that long secrecy, right? You can't. You've oh, worked yeah. on this epic thing, and you can't tell anybody. Yeah, you can't talk about it at all. You know, that's that's uh, pressure uh, reload. <laughs> right. We, um, what's hilarious is like apparently we had the scoop on that like early, and like nobody noticed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it. Uh, I, I wish. I wish that like after like. I don't wish that you got in trouble. Like that's. I hope that that's all smoothed over. But oh, oh, oh yeah, all long done over. But I do wish that they'd shared the hell out of it around the office. Look what he did. Look what he did. Right. Like <laughs> that was me. Sorry. All right, everybody, look at look at this. Don't do this. Right? Don't do this. Don't wow, do Jeremy. I don't know. Like, like Kevin. That video is blowing up. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm I'm really excited. Actually, I'm about to uh, start tomorrow. I um trying to book some more conventions so i'm going to start writing and i can now say hey i'm on lego friends 2018 and i'm a really mean asshole in ace combat 7. That's so awesome. That's awesome. Hopefully that might pique some interest in some places yeah yeah did you like your role as the awax because oh, it was a lot a of fun. big role i i loved it a lot i mean it was he was a you know it took a little while and i was uh, the director was eric and i'm blanking on his last name right now fantastic director to work with we'll call um him. and and uh, we, you know, I, I, you know, because half the time, I mean, literally the email saying, okay, you've been, I auditioned with like five lines, I think it was. I mean, that's all you get. And so when you get in and you're, you know, I went in for a four hour session, we've got to get through like 600 lines or 400 lines or something, Damn. you know, you have to kind of build the character in the moment. And so it took about 20 minutes. We tried some different, you know, because it's not just about the voice. It's the attitude, obviously, with the dialogue. Oh, yeah. I try to be a nice guy, you know, and this guy's like, hey, you know what? You might die. I don't care. So, you know, we had to kind of, I had to kind of find that, you know, through just uh, as we got into the session. But because there's so little time, I mean, time is money. You know, we just went line by line by line by line. And then I guess about 20 minutes in, the director said, yeah, now you've got him. Now you've got it. I think we went back, actually, and recorded maybe 10, 15 lines that we knew just wasn't in that in band dog's head and just want to make sure that the, that the delivery of them match what we were going to do for the next, I think I recorded like, I think 10 hours total uh, on, on the game. So in fact, no, there was one, one time and I hate when this happens because it sucks, but they have to pay me. Um, there was one day where they said, Kevin, you, we missed one line, but they have to pay me my rate. You know, that's, that's the rules. And so I literally went in and I think I said it was like, you know, uh, missiles down. All right, look at the time. That was a great session, guys. Thanks. And walked right out. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, what, that's what happens, you know. I mean, that's uh, there's some. Now, there's... now, how do you, you talked about, you know, not not being a jerk in real life, which, by the way, jives with the last time you were on the show. Like, never at any time was I like, wow, this guy's a jerk. Like, you're, you're a super great guy. Oh, so, <laughs> as an actor, though, like, how do yeah. you. How do you put yourself in that place? Like, is there do, is there any tools that you use or? Well, I always I trust it's especially with voiceover where I don't have an opportunity. Like with video games, I I I've never been able to read the script beforehand. You know, so I'm going in cold. 
So it's a combination of trusting that the director knows what he or she wants um, and how to approach the character. Looking at the dialogue and seeing how this character speaks, you know, that'll give you a ton of clues into the mindset. And then just kind of building on those two elements and just using my imagination, you know, and, and seeing, okay, you know, obviously the, the storyline is is that we've got prisoners who are pilots now and they, you know, they're, they're yeah, and I don't care about them, you know, and I can, and, and so I kind of had to get in that mindset and I just, just thought, hey, and, hey, you may die, but I don't care, you know, I mean, it, it's like you can't really say that and not sound like a jerk, you know. Yeah. Um, so it, using all those elements, and then and then, like I said, it took me about twenty minutes to kind of get in the mindset. We just played with things, you know. And and he's military, so what his military thought process is like, you know. This is something that, you know, we're blowing up stuff, but this is everyday stuff for military, you know, of this type. So it's um, and spoiler alert. You also got to remember. The guys you're talking to are expendable. They don't care what happens to these guys. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to get the mission done, you know, dead or alive. Um, I'm I'm safe in my control bunker. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, no, it's it's a it, it's a lot of layers. It's a lot of and having to work fast because again, my, my first session was four hours, and I, like I said, I think it might have been like 500 lines, but still, I mean, it's just we're just doing line after line after line and staying in that character. You know, you're standing, you know, for four hours and sometimes you're yelling, sometimes you're not, you know, and, and actually I was terrified because that was when I had gotten really, really ill with this unrelenting cough that would just not go away. I've talked about in the past and I was so scared because I had, I brought all my tea with me and my throat, uh, um, you know, lozenges and everything in the hopes that I wouldn't lose my voice. And toward about the last 20 minutes, it was starting to crack pretty bad. But thankfully, it was just a lot of yelling and grunting and everything. So a lot of elements to get that performance out that, you know, people are getting are blazing through in 10 hours or something. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Go ahead. Do you, have a, do you have a favorite line you said during the game? And, or, and is there one you hated because you couldn't get it down? Oh, my gosh. Like I said, the last time I was in the booth was 10 months ago. Okay. Uh, I, you know, anything where I got to just be an asshole. I mean, I don't know. I just, it, it, uh, I mean, there was a, there was a couple, I guess early on, you know, again, going back to the idea where, you know, trying to find the character and well, and then another element, cause it's actually a technical element where it gets challenging that I hate to do it is because what we also have to do is that we not only supposed to be performing and acting, but we're under a time constraint in the sense that these lines of dialogue have to fit in a certain number of seconds. Um, yeah. So, you know, cause I'm, and I'm matching to uh, a scratch track of, of an original audio so that we know it's gotta be a second and a half long. And if I get, if I'm over and, and they can't squeeze it, I gotta do it again. We gotta, you know, faster, slower, you know? Um, so those elements are the ones I really hated. Um, but uh, no, overall he was a fun, a fun dude to play. You know, so I, I I don't have any specific line. I mean, I just I'll, I remember saying a lot of, you know, fire missiles or you know aim for the trucks or or something. Um, uh, uh, the whole thing was fun. I mean, you know, wh wh whenever I get to do, I mean, you know, this is still. I, I wish that voiceover was my full full time job. It's not quite there. Yeah. It's getting better, but boy, it was. Um, so any chance to do this and to play a character that's really kind of opposite of me is a lot of fun. Um, compared to like, you know, Lego friends, I play a guy named Steve, um, um, Newman, who was, uh, the audition I got is that he's a hipster politician. He's got the flannel shirt with the big beard and, you know, that got to be a little more, you know, Oh, what are you doing ladies? You know, kind of thing compared to like, you know, get your ass in gear trigger, you know, kind of thing. So, right. A great a different, combination. A different audience too. Right. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, uh, uh, the younger, uh, you know, I guess seven and under for for uh, Lego Friends is going to be writing out saying, "Hey, mommy, can I uh, buy this game so I can blow up stuff?" You know, so right, right. <laughs> now, now, when you're this other, talk to us a bit about the this this Lego project. How did you come across oh. it, and and what is it? Give us a bit more details about this. Oh, Lego Lego Friends. It's it, Lego Friends. Apparently, is a little uh, a CGI animated series from Lego that's been around for a few years. And I think one of the, I don't know, I don't know what the history of why this happened, but apparently like every season, excuse me, they changed the vocal cast, the voiceover cast. And it was just an audition that I got from uh, Bang Zoom Studios. And 
uh, read for this character and I booked it. And uh, it was interesting. This was my first time, you know, because usually with with, with anime, um, which has been the, the 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 you know the the biggest element of my voiceover career. Um, it's just me and the director and the and the you know and the engineer because the cartoon the cartoon's already done and so I've got to match flaps and all this stuff. Well, Lego wasn't drawn yet, so it was my first time doing a full cast recording. So where the entire cast is there, we've got nine microphones and we're in a semicircle and we're just reading through the scene, reading off of each other. So it was a lot of fun. It was a, that was a lot of fun. Um, Apparently, I just I just had a recording session the other day, and I think I could talk about it because it's out now. Obviously, they, don't they get yourself that. in trouble now. Uh, well, uh, and then we, we we started, but apparently, uh, we're the longest running cast so far that they seem to like us a lot. So nice. Um, but yeah, no, I've been doing that for a couple of summers, and that was that was another odd one I couldn't talk about uh, because Disney has the airing rights to it, apparently, or something like that. But they weren't airing it here. It was airing in, I think, in China in English for some reason. Oh wow! Okay. And then I don't know why. Um, but then Lego apparently, you know, said we want to get this out, so it just popped up on YouTube last November. So I just happened to find it, um, and so I popped it up. And he's a fun little guy to play. I, you know, he's he's a side character. He's not a main character. He's, he's sprinkled. You know, throughout the, yeah. the series here. But what is kind of cool is that I do have an action figure of him in one of the play sets. So that's kind of cool. I've always wanted to be an action figure. So that's pretty uh, awesome. Yeah. That, that, that was a lot of fun. You know, not quite the big G.I. Joe muscles with the kung fu grip, you know, but, <laughs> uh, you know, if you're a young, young boy or girl who likes Legos, you can run me around saying, hi, I'm a politician. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's a lot of fun. So I'm I'm noticing I'm noticing boxes of uh what looked like comic book boxes back there. What what's in some of those comic book boxes? They, they don't look like comic book because they are comic book boxes. Uh, this is the backside of my of my one of my geek things. You can see the tabletop games. I, I had a bad habit of backing a ton of games on Kickstarter. Half of them I haven't played yet, but um, uh, but so they're comic book boxes. I've been collecting comics for about thirty years now, and. Uh, uh, actually, just just last summer, uh, I'm, they, they were kind of scattered everywhere. Uh, you know, I'm not saying in boxes, but not organized. And I found this great app where you could scan it in. It's called Collectors or something like that. I have that same app. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I know I'm, what you're talking about. I would throw on a movie, and for about two or three hours a night over two weeks, I scanned everything and I put everything in. So. So that is my comic book collection, and and it's already growing. Actually, I, you can't say I've got it. Actually, you can't say I've got a table over here. I've got a file those away still my uh, goodness my, my exciting life out of voiceover uh that's just all my uh current stuff but uh i'm i'm you know because i go to a great gym for nerds and we have a lot of creative people in fact we have one uh young lady named Margaret scott who is now the new writer on batgirl so um so i've got some of her books up there and just again more kickstarter stuff i've backed um and I've got some graded ones down there and, you know, all sorts. I've been a big comic book guy for years. So nice. Nice. Yeah. What kind of a, what, what, what are some of the highlights you think of your, of that, what are particular um, comics that you have enjoyed collecting over those years? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, what's funny. I used to start out reading, you know, I used to be kind of a, a follower of a company. So for a few years, it'd be Marvel. Then I would jump over to DC. Like when the new 52 came out, I jumped on that bandwagon for a while um now i i really follow more creators like you know i'm one of the black sheep i like rob liefeld in fact if you want hold on one second i'll share one of my prized possessions oh absolutely so folks i'm going to take this opportunity to remind you that we do have a live chat going if you have questions for uh kevin if you have questions for us it could be about ace combat uh, seven it could be about his comic collection um just keep it clean um go okay. ahead and join us in the chat All righty. So for the younger, I mean, the older fan, listening and fans, uh, there was a series back in the early 90s called uh, Heroes Reborn, if you might remember that. Uh, yes, Heroes I Reborn, do remember that, actually. So Heroes Reborn basically was, uh, there were four titles that were struggling. It was Captain America, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, and the Avengers, which is so weird to say because now they're obviously monster hits. But right. in the early 90s, they were struggling. And so Marvel did a very controversial move at the time. They hired Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, who had left to make Image. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that to come in, and they each took two titles and to kind of revamp for the 90s. Well, you might remember a magazine called Wizard. Yes. 
where they would have a contest of, you know, every month of some like a statue or a graphic novel or a hardback or something like that, right? Well, one month they had a contest to win all of Rob Liefeld's artwork to his Captain America number four issue. So that's the issue right there. You can see that. Okay. Very nice. You could enter as many times as you wanted, but there was a catch is you couldn't, you know, take the little form and fill it out and then copy that. You had to hand fill each one indiv individually. <laughs> so being the dork that I am, I was able to fit six. I shrunk it a little bit and I was able to fit six uh, copies of the entry form on one regular sheet of paper and just copied, I don't know how many tons I did. And I used to, I, uh, I was in college at the time and I was doing theater and then I would work the graveyard shift, graveyard shift at QVC. And so I would just sit there on the phones and just fill these things out. And then this very nice lady at the post office who was helping me mail them said, you know what? If you use the small envelopes, you can use postcard stamps to send them and it's cheaper. I'm like, oh, bless you. So three months later, let me get this out of the way. Uh, I did indeed win all the artwork to his Captain America number four. Wow. One of my prized possessions for years. He signed it a couple times on some pages. It's great. It's a, wait, where's the great shot of where is this? Let's see here. It's a great shot of the Red Skull and Captain America. Uh, so yeah, that's one of my prized comic book possessions there. But uh, amongst the uh, uh, you know issues here, some of the other ones that I really like, um, you know, a lot of people have a nice, you know, like a long run. Like it was Chris Claremont, who had like 22 years of writing X-Men, I think, or something like that. Um, the longest run I've got is J. Michael Straczynski's Amazing Spider-Man run he did for six years. I got an entire run of that, and then I've got some graded books, like First Appearance of Deadpool. Um, I got a First Appearance of Red Tornado from 64, I think it is, something like that. Wow. So, a lot of cool stuff. Now, the latest thing I'm getting into, yeah. um, so you get me start talking, I won't shut up. Um, is, <laughs> That's kind of the I, idea. Okay, cool. Um, I love, I'm amazed by artists. I love original artwork, obviously, since I have that. Um, and, you know, a big trend these days has been doing, um, uh, publishing with sketch covers. So blank covers that, you know, you can hire an artist to uh, do a do an artistic piece on, you know. So I've been buying a lot of those in the hopes that, uh, you know, getting some more voiceover stuff going. So when I go to Comic-Con or some other conventions, especially with anime conventions, I'm just amazed at the talent uh, of original artists there. And so that I can hire somebody to, um, you know, do a piece for me. I've got these, I got these books that I bought off Kickstarter where they're basically blank comic book sketchbooks. And I picked a character for each book to get different artist interpretations of that character. Like I've got a Deadpool book, you know, and I've got one for Kane Fury, who I was in Full Metal Alchemist, you know, and got a couple pieces of that. So so that that's kind of been also a trend of mine lately as well. Pretty cool. Were you ever into image comics at all? Oh yeah, oh yeah, when they came out, I was, like I said, I was right there. I Because I got interested really into Rob Liefeld on X-Force and Todd McFarlane on Amazing Spider-Man. So I was there first day when Youngblood 1 came out, um, which was the first book from Image and sadly sits in many 25 cent boxes now. But um, yeah, I followed Youngblood, Spawn. I was on I followed Savage Dragon with Eric Larson. Um, yeah, so, and, and I'll, I'll go back. Like uh, my brother went to school with Brian K. Vaughn. So I-, I Oh, I, okay, I, okay. I like, uh, like, like Saga. I follow up, um, and uh, you know they've got so many things now. It's, I kind of have to pick and choose, you know, yeah. well now. But when it first started, I was, I was hardcore, young blood and Spawn and Wildcats and. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, I have. <laughs> yeah. I collected. I, let's see. I was Wildcats, Cyberforce, Cyberforce, uh, yeah. Velocity, and um, oh, what was the other one? Oh, there was one more. Gen thirteen. Gen 13, good old J. Scott yep. Campbell. Yeah. Yep. And then they got sued, right? Because I guess the name, there's a, there's like a Generation 13 or something yeah, like they, that. Or, or they were going to be, they were going to be Gen X. They were going to be Gen, Gen X, but I think Marvel or Marvel. DC had a comment called yeah. Generation X. Yep. And yep, so I, then they, they turned yeah. it to Gen 13, but. Gen 13, yeah. Well, I remember yeah. I got the compendium around here somewhere of that book. Yeah. Nice. And go the good old days, you know. 
So there was apparently there was a um, there was a Gen thirteen cartoon. Yes, yes, there was actually, but it, it you can only find it in bootleg now. Well, oh. some people can find it in bootleg. I haven't even been able to find the bootleg, but yeah, yeah. No, I've I've seen clips of that, and there was actually even a uh, a Young Blood uh, cart. If you Google Young Blood cartoon yeah. on. Uh, or if I look on YouTube, you'll find it. It's like an opening sequence, you know, with no sound or anything like that. But yeah, they had that too, you know. All those deals that uh, never came to fruition. You know? Oh yeah, oh so. yeah. They rebooted recently. They they did a uh, they tried to reboot Velocity and Cyberforce and that kind of stuff. But well, I was intrigued um, by Cyberforce. I think that was a Kickstarter where Mark Silvestri did that so he could give away free copies, and I think it, I think it worked very very well. Yeah. Um, so I've been surprised that they haven't really gone too far for a lot of these folks. They haven't gone too far in the back catalog. You think back issues would be ripe for, you know, re-releasing yeah, on the, yeah. the platform. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm, I I don't know much. I mean, I all, all that business side of it, you know. In fact, I was just reading about a, a, a collection that of a series I hadn't read, but uh, from Image and the, and the uh, author made a, 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 a tweet saying, well, Image has canceled the uh, physical publication of our of our last collection is going to be digital only you know but that's the business so yeah so many elements you know and and a lot of money and and if it doesn't sell it doesn't sell I th and i think even now even with the success of like the marvel movies and yeah don't get me started about dc movies um <laughs> but, uh, we'll uh, have you back on we'll have you back on to talk about marvel versus dc that, absolutely i've got a few <laughs> things to say about that though i am i am very excited about shazam i am looking forward to shazam. i am too zachary levitt right zachary levi and i, uh, I think that he was a genius casting opportunity because honestly i haven't been too uh psyched for I, wonder woman i thought was amazing um and uh i hear good things about aquaman um but i'm still gonna wait and catch it on on blu-ray or netflix it yeah um but i gotta say uh when i saw shazam the trailer for shazam and i saw that chuck was gonna be yeah. shazam i'm like yeah. you know what i don't even care i'm i'm there i'm there yeah no, i'm I, there i think he can carry it i think he can I, carry it I wholeheartedly agree he has worked his butt off to look amazing he's yeah. been a, hey welcome back uh he's a, a, a big inspiration for me um, you know, with uh, what we might talk about a little later, I, I did gain a, uh, some weight last year, but I'm back at my gym now and everything like that. But I don't know if you know this. Uh, I'm, I, I love talking about this guy, um, the director. Do you know D D David Sandberg? Um, okay. Shazam. Have you heard his name before? No. I've heard his name, yeah. But what? Okay. Give, go give us some more details. So I why the love? So inspired by this guy, which is why I'm uh, again working on the weight reduction and learning how to do some filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So about, I guess maybe four, I guess maybe five years ago now. Uh, he's from Sweden, um, and he, his wife, I think, a girlfriend at the time, Lota. Uh, he was, if I recall correctly, this is just my memory. So you know, double check on this. You know, whoever's listening and intrigued by this guy, but he was basically like a uh, documentary filmmaker for uh, uh, for Sweden's version of PBS. So that was his day okay. job, and then created some little, you know, he had a little animated home animated thing he did. But what is so amazing is that he and his wife uh, would make little horror shorts in their apartment just for fun, you know, using free three free three D modeling software, and nice. they did a little short called Lights Out that. Uh, was submitted to an online horror festival that did very well. And it caught the attention of a guy named James Wan, you may recognize, who was the director of Aquaman, okay. uh, uh, was the creator of Saw, um, the director of the Conjuring Universe series, um, said, hey, I really dig your little movie here. Do you want to develop it into, into a feature film? So his very first feature film for Hollywood ever was him adapting his own little three-minute short horror film. That's pretty cool. It did very well. That's pretty cool. Which led into James Wan saying, hey, you know what you're doing and you're good at horror. Let's have you direct Annabelle the Creation. And that did really, really well. His <laughs> third Hollywood movie ever, coming from Sweden where he did little horror shorts, <laughs> In his basement, in his hallway, is freaking Shazam for Warner Brothers. I think oh, that's wow. amazing. That so is, that is pretty cool. That is very inspiring too when you hear about that. Very 
inspiring, you know. It, it, it was really cool. what was fun too is he he would also do behind the scenes videos of how he did certain things for a short film, even on Lights Out. He even did some of his own special effects using free software. I mean, it's, it, this guy is is uh, completely inspired by him. He's a really really great guy. So yeah, I'm excited about Shazam. I might go check out Aquaman this weekend. We'll see because uh, I saw it a weekend before. Mind you, I'm not a big movie person. I'm not a big superhero fan, but I enjoyed enough. it. Uh, awesome. You enjoyed it? You think it's worth it? It's worth it. I yeah. saw the drive-in theater. It was worth it. And like yeah. I said earlier, I'm a big 3D fan, and it's getting harder and harder to find 3D releases, so I better go see it now before I have to buy a 2D Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. You say that with such disgust. Well, I mean, I'm having to go to Canada to get my, my 3D releases now because they're not releasing them here anymore. So oh, like yeah. the Avengers and Black Panther, I want to get in 3D, but i got to get the Canadian edition. So... And they jack up those prices, man. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of speaking of jacked up, um, yes. Last year was kind of a interesting interesting year for you, right? Yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> what you, a segue, you, jacked up. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So uh, uh, thank you for letting me chat about it here first. And Absolutely. Forward. I heard you had a bit of a pain in the balls. A pain in the a pain. Well, actually, there was no pain. That was the that was the interesting thing. Um, so yes, I was diagnosed uh, in June, June of last year, July, June or July, uh, with testicular cancer. Um, doing thanks to Deadpool. Um, you know, I'll Deadpool check for him, before. right? Deadpool checked for me. I, he checked out my smooth criminals. So well, I was came over and checked it for him. That's what. Yeah. I was. <laughs> so you may remember. So when Dead, when the first movie came out, um, he actually did a PSA for both testicular cancer and breast cancer. Oh, the kids, we're talking about some important medical stuff here. So if you need to cover yeah. your ear, it's all good. Um, but if you're 15, you need to listen to this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a big Rob Liefeld fan. I follow him on Facebook. And someone said, hey, did anybody turn over the uh, the digital uh, uh, code card when you buy the, the – I got it right here. They buy the Blu-ray of, of um, Deadpool. So you got your and, – and don't try and use the code. I've already used it. You can't use it. There's the <laughs> – there's the, darn it. Darn, it's already taken. Sorry. But there's the thing. But if you turn the darn thing over – They've got the Testicular Cancer Association Awareness Foundation and how to, as it's labeled here, grab your man berries, examine your bag of beans. <laughs> you know, very Deadpool-esque. Um, very tongue-in-cheek. But but the tips are like legit tips on how to check. Oh, no, it, it, it's the four-step process of, of how guys should be checking themselves between the ages of 15 and 44. Once and if I month. remember right, it's really dangerous for me to get testicular cancer, right, if you don't get treated? Well, it can be. It can be. So there's, uh, I'll share some information I've learned because obviously once you get okay. something and you get through it, you know, you want to share with everybody else. So absolutely, I, I had no pain. I had no pain at all. I did. I just, I, I happened to, I was literally read that on Facebook, threw up the movie while I was watching. I was like, huh, it really is here. Well, you know, I'm 44. I've never checked before. Let me check. And oh my goodness, we've got two little things that shouldn't be there. You know, um, so it was kind of nerve wracking because so, I went to my I just, I just had I just had a new doctor because of new insurance and he was very cool. He said, OK, he said, well, you know, you know, did an examination says, you know what? I, I do feel something. It could be a cyst, which is nothing to worry about. It doesn't you know, he says, when you get back, so I was going to a convention in Canada. So the whole time I'm there, I'm like, you know, OK, I'm fine. I'm 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 not panicking at all. Um, and uh Came back and we did a we did an ultrasound, which led to an MRI, which said, yeah, you know what, uh, it's 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 cancer. So uh, the thing is to answer your question, it it can be because the thing is about testicular cancer, if you catch it early enough, and I caught it super super early, it is it, there's a 99% success rate of recovery, and even if you don't catch it that early, like I did, it's still a 96% where it can get dangerous where if it goes untreated because i didn't i did meet one young man who uh is my age but he got it when he was 21 didn't have insurance so he waited six months and where it can where it where it and uh, why I, I i don't understand the medical reasons why but it it spreads next to your spine and lungs Ooh. that's where the danger comes in so it actually went into his abdomen and his legs swelled up and he had to have like a 12-hour surgery you know um, 
Yeah. So, uh, so it's it, serious business, folks. Like you don't want to like, yes, it's weird and that kind of stuff. And it may be taboo to talk about, but like figure yeah. out, especially online, like you can find these, these instructions, right. On how to do it. Um, yeah. worth, worth doing it at least once a month. Um, you, you were just watching a movie and just, you I didn't check for that at all. Right? Like, I, I thought it was, huh. It was, I've never checked before. Or never consciously, you know, said, "Hey, I need to check myself for testicular cancer." Because you, you don't know? really think about it, like you know, you think, "Oh, it, if if it's there, I'll know right away." Exactly, and I didn't because again, there was yeah. no pain. no pain. Yeah, exactly, no pain whatsoever. Um, so no, I, I'm encouraging everyone. You know, and every, you know, I, I and I say this because I, I also want to respect our, our our transgender community. Every biological male should be checking. Yeah. Um, uh, at least once a month. And, uh, you know, if you find something, it doesn't mean it's, it could be, you know, check with your doctor. If you do yeah. are concerned, check with your doctor as fast as you can. Um, uh, so like for me, I mean, uh, literally all it was, was I had, I had what's called an orchiectomy, uh, which is a removal. Um, and the, the side note is I got my explanation of benefits, you know, when you get from your insurance company, yeah. And it said that it, my surgery and my 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 three hour surgery and an hour and a half stay afterwards cost two point five million. Holy uh, God. So I said uh, it was a misprint. Obviously, someone put in the wrong number. It was like, but right. me, I should have gotten like the implant, the like the twenty four karat gold diamond encrusted implant, and pop out right. and part. Like, look what I've got. Yeah, uh, but the you should be able to see all different kinds of movies. Right, exactly. Um, you know, and then I had two rounds of chemo, and that was done as a precautionary thing um, to make sure that it doesn't, you know, that it because because the, the radiation variety or of the pills. No, no, no. So the options I was given was wait and see, which means you know getting X-rayed with blood tests like every year for the next five years, yeah. and if it did come back, I would have to do chemo, radiation, yada yada yada. The next suggestion was radiation i don't know how long the the series would have been but he did say it would be five days a week and i'll tell you here in la my first thought was like oh my gosh that's 12 dollars of parking every day that's ridiculous you know so wow. <laughs> wrong mindset um, right, right. And, then, and then the the final suggestion was let's do a couple rounds of chemo and then we'll just test after that. And what was really great is that my urologist who did the surgery said, Kevin, let me tell you, I had the exact same thing like three or four years ago and I did the chemo. So that was really great. So yeah, so I did two rounds of chemo. Chemo was a little rougher than I anticipated. And, and I say that though with all respect, because again, I just did uh, the chemotherapy. Uh, the, there are so many people going through so much with chemo and radiation and especially kids. And it's just, they are so much stronger than me and so much more powerful and total respect to them. But it, for me, myself and I, what I did experience just, you know, in my two, I had two rounds, a um, little bit rougher than I thought, but a small price to pay to stay alive. alive. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. For sure. Exactly. Glad to have you back on the, uh, on Thank the show. Guys. I'm very honored to be here. Yeah, kudos, kudos for that, and thank you for sharing that that story. I I um you know, I spoke with uh, Kevin before we went live, uh, just because you know I, again I know that it's kind of a difficult discussion to have. Like parents, mm -hmm. you know, if they're if you're watching uh, and you think that you don't need to talk to your to your boys about this, you, you yeah, really ought to. It, I I would not. I mean, yes, I learned about it in school health class, but at the same time. You know, like you're that, a high schooler yeah, at the time, you don't care. Yeah, you're a high schooler, right? Yeah. Everybody sees it. Everybody kind of laughs and jokes, and then looks away and doesn't want to talk about it. Right. Even even among parents, right? Like, but um, I, I think what did at least stick with me through all of that was that look. At some point, when you realize that you're, you know, you're mortal, <laughs> yeah. you're, yeah. you're you're gonna remember that there were these things that were kind of important. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll openly admit like until, until you'd mentioned, you know, seeing it on Deadpool, having never checked and then you check, like I am one of those people that kind of fell into that boat of like, you know what, like that's not something that's going to happen to me. That's something that happens to other people and blah, blah, right. blah. And you never, and, um, to, to Jeremy's point, like I was somebody that's like, well, I'll know if there's something down there that's not supposed to be, or it'll hurt. Yeah. Or something. And so to hear like, no, it didn't hurt. And like, no. look, it was like, you went from like, I'm watching a movie to yeah. like, Hey, wait a minute. Something's <laughs> not quite right here. Oh, right. Yeah. You have someone else take a look. Um, exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. Another thing I've learned, is, like I said, you know, it can be taboo, and it's and and you made a very good point, because again, it is most common. It's an, it, I think I, I, I mean, again, I'm still researching. I think it's the number two cancer that men, biological men, can get. Um, and in fact, both my my urologist and my primary care physician said if you have to get cancer, this is the one to get because the treatment is such a successful rate. But you made a very good point because it is most common between the ages of 15 and 35. I actually was at the very tail end. I'm kind of on the outside of it. But between 15 and 35, you know, there's, I think I said earlier, you know, every 14 minutes, uh, uh, a, a man is diagnosed. Wow. So parents is a big thing. Talk, you know, you know, talk to your kids, you know, tell them to watch Deadpool and pull out the, <laughs> and pull out the digital <laughs> code and say, Hey, check your man berries like Deadpool tells you to. So yeah, um, that's a great point is, is, you know, and it's a tough talk. I mean, you know, I mean, parents do have to do the certain talks with kids, you know, we know, you know, what it'd be about, you know, sex or anything else or drugs or whatever. Yeah. But this is, def I, I think definitely a topic now that I can't even, I, my, my dad or mom never mentioned this to me. No, yes, my dad never did. It. I can barely remember it in, in, in health class because I'm so old and yeah. my memory's going, but you know, it's, that's a great point. I think, you know, and, and again, look, just make it a habit. The first of the month, let me do my check with my members and I'm good to go. You know, yeah, and, a couple and, of I check and I'm 30. So it's like, okay, I'm getting towards the telling like you were, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh it's uh it's a good thing to do. It's so fast, quick and easy. And if you, if, if you do happen, don't freak out, just, Call yeah, your doctor. Doctor. And you know, since we are, you know, a show that's about gaming and everything, couples make it a game. You know, a game. <laughs> there you go. You know, helping hands. I don't know. You know, yeah, there you go. There you go. Kickstart that project, right? <laughs> so, and with that, I'm going to segue. Like you, yeah. you mentioned in the uh, behind the scenes, there we're going to switch gears for just a second because that's kind of a serious topic. And I appreciate you yeah. sharing sharing that personal element of your life, and and yeah. especially. Yeah. You know, you, you fought the law and the, you know, the law did not win this time. It did not. No, I beat oh. its butt. So but, um, speaking of beating people's butt, have you played any of the, the, the games behind you that you kickstarted? And uh, if so, oh. like, what is your favorite game that you've kickstarted? That oh, my gosh. Well, let's see here. Um, some of the bigger ones. I mean, I went kind of crazy. I don't know why. I did. I've not, you know, because when I was in grad school, I did like some D&D &D stuff, but I haven't really done a lot since then and i go to a gym for nerds called nerd strong and we have game nights and a lot of gamers so i started back at these big ones with tons of miniatures the instruction book was like a novel so like um the, the beta team and omega team that's the seven sins i haven't played that one yet um i do have the official goonies uh game which i think just became um out of print nice um, we that one too we, we managed to grab that one i haven't played it yet but we got it it's a lot of fun. I, I think I think because I, I love Goonies. Yeah. Um, uh, I just got into because I was trying to learn magic for a while. I had an, an ex that's really into it, and I was going to try and learn that. And uh, I've you know splattered here and there, but then you know having to build decks and try and 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 you know learn all the the fights, all the stuff. Have yeah. you guys played Keyforge yet? No. Have yeah. you heard of Keyforge? I've heard yeah. of it. I haven't played it. Basically, what I love about Keyforge is from the guy that created Magic. Uh, I've got the big starter set up there. It, it, what's, it, it's such a brilliant idea, I think. So you buy your deck, right? And every deck is unique. You can't, it's, it's not a deck building game. So when you buy a deck, that's the deck you play with because each one is named uniquely. Every single deck you buy in the world. Wow is unique to with, with its original own original artwork on the back and its own unique name. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, but let's see. Now one kittens. Um, I love exploding kittens. Have you heard did your I story? Played about that. I played before. Yeah, I played that, that. That If I get this wrong or mischaracterize it, correct me. But when I, I played this with a, a youth group at church, Yes. And uh, to me, it seemed like a like a, a kid friendly and kid approachable version of Cards Against Humanity. I agree with that. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, you, you, you. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, and, and, and they've actually come out with a couple of expansion packs that change up the game a little bit, which is a lot of fun. Um, then, of course, I had to buy the not safe for work version. But there we are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the story behind it, I mean, again, yeah. that story amazed me, you know, where they tried their goal was to raise fifteen thousand dollars 
um, and print, I don't know what, a thousand decks or whatever, you know, or, or 5,000 out of the garage. Yeah. And they were 2.8 million to where they had to hire a country in China. And actually the people who created um, Cards Against Humanity, they actually, from the ground up, built a shipping service to ship all the cards to everybody. And now they offer their services a lot of Kickstarter, but yeah, yeah that's a pretty big one. So I love that one. I've got another one. Um, it's on the other side. Uh, where is it maybe? Just want to remind folks in the live chat, if you've got a, a, a board game, tabletop game, it could be something that you kickstarted or something that you saw at the local store. Um, what's your favorite right. uh, tabletop game? Share with us. I'm going to grab a couple real quick. Hold on. All right. I still want to talk about Ace Combat and my thoughts of it. No, I actually have some questions, Jeremy, for you that I think it'd be entertaining for Kevin to see. Okay. But I'll wait. I'll wait till he. Uh, I'll wait till he comes back. Also, yeah. I want to apologize. Ace is at war. Yeah, I had to get it. It's a book and it has beautiful artwork. One hundred nine dollars worth it. Did you? Did you have to? Did you have to create a new account to come back in? Yeah. So, this is my resume email, so don't send me shit, people. So, f folks, I need to apologize. I accidentally, earlier in the show, um, I, I accidentally kicked Jeremy out, and apparently in a Google Hangout, once you kick someone out, it's permanent. So Jeremy had to create a whole new account just to be here. Well, this was my backup to my backup to my backup. This is where I send job applications out. <laughs> <laughs> so you got if, if you're hiring, let me know. Nice. Kevin is back with a stack. Okay. Kevin is okay. back with a stack. Hey, do you have the same all sorts of fun stuff for me tonight? Well, um, I can't find one that I really dig. And, and for all the churchgoers, I apologize. But uh, there's, there's this one game. I think it's it's called Exorcism, where basically one person's a demon and the rest are all the priests, and you got to exorcise the demon. Um, a couple of cool ones that I'm really, I haven't opened this one yet. I may never do that. It's, it's called Escape Room in a Box. Oh, I've heard of that. This was a cool thing that two young ladies developed it for Kickstarter. I think Mattel bought it. Yeah. And it's now an award winning game, but they actually play tested at my gym uh, a couple years ago. And so we got to do the play testing of it and give some critique of it because it's a great idea. You know, if you don't want to spend the money on a real escape room, you've got escape room in a yeah. box. But the other side of it is, is that it's a one time only because you got to tear open stuff and right, right. You know, still a fun little, a fun little thing. Um, you know, just because I'm like, here. Yeah. Escape room in a box seems like a good, and honestly, I, I or obviously rather, I, I know that it's difficult to kind of set something up, but like my wife and I were doing um, a couple of, I wasn't one for those loot boxes or anything like that, but my wife yeah. and I did try for, for a short period of time. Uh, it's called date night in a box. Oh, nice. And, uh, and we did a couple of them and, and they were fun and they were good. What, what happened was um, we ended up acquiring a backlog because just life got really ridiculously busy last year stuff i won't get into but right. um so we just we ended up like having them arrive month after month and we weren't we weren't using them but um but when we did do them we we really enjoyed them and they were really they were good and they were effective they they fostered conversation that we wouldn't have otherwise had they yeah. uh, they had us doing some stuff um in terms of you know interactive things like you know you have a blindfold and you have a like a little whiteboard and a marker and somebody like asks you to draw a picture of something and you have to draw the picture like blindfolded and then they draw the picture blindfolded. Um, and then, you know, you, you take the blindfold off and you, you see how good or bad you did. And so they had all these different things about, you know, communicate, you know, they had one where you're just kind of, you're drawing it um, by yourself. Um, yeah. you say like, Hey, draw, you know, draw a picture, you know, of a, you know, a, a bird and the sun and a blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then there's another one where they can actually tell you, you know, like, no, like up a little, you know, more, the sun should go a little oh, part of the right, you know, things like that. And, and the yeah. point of it was, you know, you do this activity and you see the first picture and the first picture is like awful, right? <laughs> like the, you got the birds flying on like the, in the ocean water, right? Yeah. The sun is like, you drew it on the table, you know, all this like crazy stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Cause you just missed the, missed the board. And then what was amazing was the second one where they're actually kind of guiding you and telling, you know, a little bit more here, a little bit more there. You're still blindfolded. You still couldn't see the, the picture still wasn't a Picasso, but it looked much, much better. And then it kind of gets into a, how, you know, like sometimes life is kind of like, you know, the blind leading the blind and it's not impossible to have 
a decent outcome provided that there's good communication and that you're willing to kind of adapt to unexpected things that happen and things like that. So I kind of liked that. It seems like escape room uh, because the downside of it was obviously like there wasn't really a lot of replayability to any of the date night stuff. Once you've yeah. done it, you've done it. You've kind of taken it away. Um, yeah. Escape room in a box sounds like something that would be a lot of effort for the creator to make like a year subscription to, but would be oh, yeah. amazing to have, right? Like every month, this new escape room. Escape room, yeah. No, they. I mean, I think they. I think they spent like two years developing it. So it was yeah for one. Yeah, one you know. Like technical things, like materials, like like there's one thing where you, where it has a, a little just a little lock, and trying to find one that wouldn't break when it was shipped and when it you know if it wouldn't bend and it you know could the, will the key always open it you know the kind of thing. Right. Um, so little technical things like that, it it definitely took a lot. I mean these young ladies were just awesome in it, and I'm so amazed that they you know like Mattel bought the I think bought the the whole project and I think they won a couple of awards as well. So. Uh, but fun stuff. And that's amazing too. That's a, that's a great idea though for a loot box if if you can keep up with it, as you said. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be a lot of a lot of work. So you might have to start it. Like maybe somebody's already working on it, but it just takes a long time. A long I just took both of them. I might have to buy one of each soon. <laughs> yeah, there you the go. Dating one the, the, the dating one in the escape room. Yeah. So if you guys got suggestions of certain ones, if there's difference, tell me, and I'll try to. Oh sure, sure, absolutely. Um, Another one of my favorites. I haven't got. I haven't played this a lot with a bunch of friends, but um, this was the uh, uh, two other games have come out from the uh, from the um, uh, exploding kittens. Uh, there was the the bears versus babies, with oh, the God. little fur covered box where you got to build creatures to fight off babies. You know, because <laughs> that's what you do. Um, Gotta watch out for those babies. I watched about that for the babies, and then there's the crab one where, where I it came with crab hands and all this stuff. It was a lot of fun. One of the simplest ones, and I'll take this with me to a restaurant if I'm with some friends, you know, because I get bored easily. Um, is zombie dice? That's a lot of. I, I like that one. It's just a little, a little zombie game with dice, you know, and you can pack it away. Um, right. I don't know if I can find it. This is a a a play on uh, cards against humanity called cons, cons against our sanity. <laughs> and these two young ladies did it, and uh, volume one, volume two, and I think. Hold on, let me see if it's here. Uh, I got these little stickers, but you could uh, get a custom card when you backed it on Kickstarter. And I, I, I requested mine to be like, you know, one of the answers was listening to the sweet whisperings of voice actor Kevin M. Conley. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've got to find, maybe I can find a young lady to play that with me and we'll, that's see nice. Think, you know, so yeah. So, but yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um, actually I'm really kind of getting back into it. I, I took a little time off, uh, from gaming and that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I let's see the other big ones. I'm going to up there. Kevin. Yeah. If you're ever looking for someone to join you, technically we don't look that far apart. I just looked at my 35 miles. Remind, remind me where you are again. I'm near Long Beach. You're long, that's right. That's right. Well, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to do that. We'll probably, I just yeah. looked it up. We're like 35 miles. So it's tech, I mean, I got to drive through L.A., though, to get to your house. Oh, God, yeah. I, I, you know, actually, I'll, I'll t- I tell the last time I went to Long Beach, well, I, what, what did I go for? I went for, oh, I went for the, the Queen Mary Horror Nights. But there was I one thing. <laughs> I, I will say, I took, I, I treated myself to a little adventure. I actually took the train from uh, uh, from here in uh, North Hollywood over to Long Beach and sat out on the, on the lawn by the, by the water there and read for a couple of hours. And that was really nice. Maybe I'll do that. Very nice. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so like, so like the big, the big miniature games, like I said, that have a, have a, an instruction manual. That's the length of a, of a short novel. I haven't, I haven't got around yet, you know, to dedicate that's that. The, that's the only thing I don't like about tabletop games. Although I have to say for folks that like struggle um, one benefit that we have now that we didn't have back then is, and, and sometimes I kind of have to remind myself, we have YouTube now. And so it's really good. Oh, yeah. and there's been some games that I played that have some pretty complicated rule sets. Uh, one of those games is uh, a betrayal at house on the hill. Uh, I've heard of that, but I don't know why. Yeah. The first, it's like a tile based game. You put down, oh, okay. you explore. And, um, as you explore, uh, you pick different characters and they have different abilities and different weaknesses. And so the first half of the game, it's kind of like co-op. Everybody's just kind of exploring, collecting, finding what you can find, and trying to avoid triggering triggering something bad from happening. Yeah. Um, but there's this dynamic in the game that basically the, the longer you play, like each round, 
the chances that you're going to trigger something bad from bad happening increases. And oh. if you trigger enough things, the game changes, and that becomes the betrayal portion. Um, somebody usually, a character, yeah, usually one of the players dies. Uh, often, but not always, the character that dies then becomes the betrayer. Um, and then it'll go into, they've got all these different modes, like the Invisible Man, they've got, um, you know, Vampire, Werewolf, all this stuff. And so yeah. now one of these people um, that maybe you helped, maybe you gave a whole bunch of stuff to now becomes the actual betrayer. So, like, the game really is interesting. Like, for oh, example. Yes. Okay. Now, I you just described it. I remember reading about that now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it, it's really interesting because the second half of the game is completely different almost every time, depending on there's like 60 different endings. And that's even before the, the expansion. Pack. Yeah. But to try to juggle all those rules can be kind of daunting. Honestly, like when we're, when we're playing a tabletop game with somebody that doesn't really do a lot of gaming, we don't bring yeah. that game out because we just know that the rule set is too complicated. Uh, other games can be just as complicated. Sometimes games like uh, Dominion, games like Citadel. Yeah. We love playing those games with friends of ours. And um, honestly, there was a couple times where we're like, I'm pretty sure that we're not playing this right. And it used to just be whatever you're going through the manual, it's just your best interpretation and then house rules, right? But now you right. can actually look online. And so what we'll do is if we oh, get stuck, yeah. I'll just I'll just turn on a YouTube video and be like, we're going to watch this three or four times until we got it yeah. down. And there's some really, really good tutorial videos for these games out there now so yeah there's actually a buddy of mine uh, who i mentioned earlier before we went live here about who does the twitch thing and uh we're, we're planning about uh because i bought the microphone arm and i've got a webcam arm now and i got a ring light we're going to set up um, we might do a a, a twitch thing of keyforge you know because that's still oh, nice it, it came out and they already had to adapt the rule book a little bit they've had to make some changes and so you know we, we thought about trying to do a video of our own you know basically yeah being the good game intellectual guy me like saying i don't know what i'm doing does this beat you i don't know sure why not it looks pretty um that's kind of how i play magic and and key forge and other fun games so nice but yeah that's fantastic though so speaking of ad living here's my next and final probably segue for the night okay i wanted to give jeremy i i want to actually ask jeremy a couple questions um which you might find interesting kevin because they're gonna be questions about about you um, okay. okay. So, so, Jeremy, now that before you before we started, I gotta make you jealous real quick because I know you're a big fan of this game. This is one of my birthday gifts from Brittany. Life is Strange Collector's Edition. I don't oh, know if you have it. Very nice. Actually, I have before it. the storm. I have it right back there, my friend. I figured you would, but it's a nice. She bought for me. Yeah, I have it. I have it right back I, there behind I, the DeLorean. You can't I quite figured. make it out, but that's. But hey, congrats, man! Congrats. I got a quick question. So wait, do I see two copies of the same Tomb Raider game over there? You actually, it's out of screen a little bit, but you see three. Like I literally, I I, I went into a uh, GameStop um, like a week after the release. Yeah. GameStop doesn't keep stuff for a week after the release. Once everybody's picked up the pre-orders, they kind of empty everything out. Okay. And um, they were just about ready to throw away their Tomb Raider display. And I said, nope. And I grabbed it and I put it in my car. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and there's a reason actually for that there. I mean, part of it is to make sure that there's not like empty wall space like here. But part sure. of it also is that there's a window there. And this is a third floor loft situation. Okay. And so one thing that is not good for your collection, folks, right? You're learning all kinds of valuable stuff, how to survive you know, how to survive a, you know, cancer and all this stuff. Um, so here's how to make sure your collection survives time. These things do not like sunlight. Exactly. Repeatedly for extended periods of time. Kevin probably knows this with his comic books. That's why you keep them in, you know, yep. in boxes with the lids on unless you're reading them. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I, that's purely there to block the window because I'd rather have a whole bunch of empty filler boxes be sun faded than have yeah. the collection be sun faded. Exactly. Exactly. I'm trying to see what that's else. That's why my blinds like. are always closed in my gaming room. Yeah. Yeah. See my my I can can you no you can't see it. Um so my unit is a little weird here in LA. I, I it's a studio apartment. It used to be the rec center for the complex. Oh really? But, yeah there used to be a big hot tub right outside. I I I've got a huge sliding glass door here. Unfortunately on my, it used to be right Used to be right. Apparently, it leaked all the time. Oh, so I've got a huge sliding glass door that doesn't open, uh, uh, sadly enough. Um, but I have it completely covered with white blinds because I just, as you said, I don't want any fading on any of my packaging. So yeah, 
Um, but yeah, sunlight is, is bad for the collectibles. So definitely you know, is. Trying to just see what else you got over there. Is that a Nintendo I'm seeing up there on that little uh human system? Yeah. Okay, because so I got a buddy of mine who was probably a, a, more at your level. He is he has collected every gaming system since the Atari twenty six hundred. And he had a custom built TV uh, setup so that he has every gaming system lining around the TV on different shelves in chronological order, mind you, all yeah. the way up, around, over, and then down the other side. And he got this huge, he wired it up with a huge button, this, this relay system that he just hits a button and he can activate any single one he wants, he wants to play. Actually, mine's kind of like that too. I got a come over. Yeah, mine's kind of like that. I have on my left, I have all my retros, and to my right, right now, I have all my moderns and all connected to my TV. I have two rack mount power supplies and three switchers. Good lord, man! Oh, I'll yeah. bite you over one day. I'll show you. Yeah, and my wife, I'm, I'm still. I have to keep most of this under wraps, but my wife and I have been discussing the specifications of the house that will come after this one. Yes. And what I can share is when the time comes, the new house has a dedicated floor that is half home theater, half arcade. Love it. And this 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 isn't like pipe dream. This is like no, like if if it can't do that, that's not the house we're buying. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, just, I have a similar agreement. If me and Brittany get married and we buy a house, she agrees. I get to have a gaming room, but she gets to organize it. I'm like, that's fine. Hey, yeah. First, if she watches this and she and she just heard you say, "If we get married, you might be in trouble already, dude." Come on. <laughs> oh, we can go. I think they're both they're both taking it slow. They're both okay. Everybody else is in a rush. We're just enjoying our time together. There you go. Okay. So, speaking of enjoying the time together, since we have, I'm going to do something that'll potentially jeopardize that. Okay. okay. I'm going to ask Jeremy some questions. Oh yes, Kevin, about your performance. Oh boy. And so yeah, we'll see we'll see what Jeremy. So the first question I have for Jeremy cuz you've played the whole game and beat it, right? Yes. Uh um More? ready? Twice now. Twice I beat it twice already. Wait a minute. It just came out what 2 days ago? Friday Friday I beat it cuz I got Friday afternoon and within 20, 90, 24 hours I beat it Saturday. I went to my girl's house for us the rest of the weekend. Came back yesterday, start the game over and I beat it this afternoon. Oh the lord. Game. So, so we know that you think that AWACS Band Dog's character, okay, kind of an a hole, which was the intent. So nailed it, right? Okay, yes, that's his intent. So, so, so that's a testament to Kevin's Kevin's artistry, right? But yeah. if you had to pick, uh, Jeremy, if you had to pick a favorite uh, line from AWACS Band Dog, what would it be? That'd be hard because now I know he is, so I have to, you know, well, I'm gonna play it again anyway. Third time <laughs> of charm, but um, I just could tell, like, you know, in the game because I don't want to give too many spoilers, but Bandog doesn't care about the pilots, he don't care because you know, you're one of the pilots, he don't care, yeah. you're expendable. Uh, spoiler alert, real quick, close your ears for 10 seconds. <laughs> you're a prison colony, but you guys, you know, you're accused of shooting down the president, and you know, so Bad Dog doesn't give a shit about you, he's like, go do your job if you get shot down. Oh well, you're dead. Right. So along with your um wingman, they're all you know convicts. Right. So you, you, can, don't, you don't have a favorite. You don't have a favorite saying from him. You don't have a favorite line that just was like a ooh, that's a guess, real stinger. Let's see. Um, if I remember right, he's always threatening to put people in solitary, which is always funny. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, you're always threatening to put people in solitary because, like, you know, if you return to base, because one mission you can't return to base, but you're allowed to. Yeah. Anybody returns to base, that's for real pilots. If you return, you're going to solidary. That's right. The, re yeah. the real pilots get to go home. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, last time I recorded this was a year yeah. ago, and I don't remember. So oh, he'll sit. Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. I ask you a question. Okay. So, so the next question is, right? Was there was there any uh quip that um that you just like, okay, that's enough. Like, I don't need to hear that one again. No, because Ace, like, I'm a huge fan. See, I got all the games. And um, the voice wow. acting is always expandable. The storyline is always really, really good. You know, it's like, there's like nothing like, okay, that's cheesy or, oh, that's lame. No. It's usually, it's, well, it, these are well written games. 
Nice. So, yeah. so, so every every line to you hit its mark. Even even the ones where he's being like really really stinging, like they to to yeah. you they they served their purpose and were targeted correctly. Because they laid out the story, so you understand. Okay, Ben doesn't care about you because you're you're a prisoner. You're just up there to you're pretty much kind of fodder up there. So why would he care? You're you know you're a murderer at the end of the game. Yeah. But so yeah. they didn't do anything. You know what I mean, though, right? Like sometimes. Yeah. 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 Like like in Cybermore for the Atari, where did you learn to drive? Like every time that you crash, <laughs> in mountain, and because the controls are so bad, you're constantly yeah. crashing in the mountain. So most of the game is you like, like hugging a mountain as you hear, "Where did you learn to drive? Where did you learn to drive?" There wasn't any. Oh, not, not, not like that, but then again, I'm really good at the game. Okay, I played for years, so it's like I'm not doing stupid mistakes most of the time, except for hitting that mountain that one time. But it's not the point. <laughs> I'd be the, the one. Man. Stupid mistakes, just running into mountains, saying I can't. You know, why am I? In my defense, that mountain wasn't there five minutes ago. Uh, exactly, exactly. It yeah, it jumped right out at me. It jumped right out uh, at me. I just want to say though, that thank you for the comments about that. I, you know, that yeah, I'm glad you like the voice acting overall, which I think really is a great testament to the director. I mean, you know, this is yeah. a guy who has so many actors and a monster script. Like I said, I think just me yeah. alone was like maybe even 1,400 lines of dialogue, and so that's yeah, piled on top. 20 missions there's multiple actors so and they're always yeah. talking to you there's no there's no dead air in the game for the most part yeah yeah you know there's so, chatter between uh, awax and the pilots the pilots are chattering and it was like yeah. shut up and just do your job yeah exactly so, and for all of this to be clear yeah. for all of this like this was all a clean room for you right like you're just going based on existing tracks that were laid down like you're not actually with the other people when you're recording right oh, no no no, no. We're, we go line by line just me myself and i i was actually listening to I don't actually I don't, I don't I don't know if I can say this or not I'll just say it because I, I mean the game's out you know it was being developed in Japan so I was actually having to match the timing and delivery and performance of the Japanese actor. Well, Bandai Namco is for Japan and Project exactly, East. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, I assume, yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I'm sure. So, so yeah, I would I would they would uh, they would play the Japanese in my ear I, and then I would just but, you know listen to him and then just say my line in English. Uh, again, both for delivery and for time. I mean, there was a couple times like, okay, hold on, we, we're, we're going to try and squeeze it to make sure it fits, or it might right. be okay. So, you know, like a half they, second short. You gotta, translate, right? So they translate for you. It's like, okay, you got matched to Japanese. Okay, okay, yeah. that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So there's a oh. whole script. Everything is done. I mean, the script. I mean, just look at the script of just pages and pages and pages and pages and pages and pages, and then everything's color coded for each character, so he knows where yeah. to go around. Which is what I think happened when I had to go in for that one line that we somehow missed is that they didn't, whoever was going through the script just happened, and, you know, and mistakes happen. We just happened to miss highlighting that one little line and having to go in and get paid for an hour's worth of work saying, you know, watch out for the missile. Okay, and I'm out of here now. So have you watched uh, the old Simpson episodes, it's like, the, you know, the originals? Oh, Kevin. yeah. Remember when Krusty was making a doll and he walked into the room and it's like reading line by line and he oh, did like in five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever done yeah. that? Uh, the, the technicians, like, okay, Crusty, you're ready. Where did he go? Exactly. Yeah, no, I haven't got, I haven't quite got there. Um, okay. But uh, uh, yeah, no, it's it's you know it, it's the challenging process. I mean, this is what I love because like, I do a panel about voice acting, and I try to talk about the things that other voice actors don't talk about, like you know that you know you you're going to be there for four hours and you're going to be standing, you know, and you get a, you get a five minute break halfway through and you're just going to be doing line and 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 line. Or if like, brutal. It, it can, oh, it can. Like I said, I was really ill with this cough that just wouldn't go away. And like the last 20 minutes, I was really afraid that my voice was going to leave me and I'd be out of a job. But we pushed through, you know, um, like what I did, I did years ago and I hope and hope to do it again. Um, Actually, no, I did do. I can't. Oh, I can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> you know, no, no trouble. No trouble. Yeah, no, I, I, I had an audition. How do I say this and not get in trouble? I had an audition for a character. And it's funny because I don't think I booked the job because I haven't heard from them. But I had to audition for a character I've played before. And which was very odd. Yeah. Um, because the instructions are, we don't want to match the original voice actor, but the essence of the original voice actor. And I'm like, but I am the original voice actor. Um, so, uh, so, so not you, but not you know, me, you know but you. kind of like me. So yeah, it was, it was uh, and like I said, I actually don't think I booked it because I haven't heard from them. It really sucks because it paid really. It was a union job. So. Mm -hmm. um, 
But like like when I did uh, when I did World of Warcraft years ago. I mean, I did this. It For was Call a four-hour. Oh, that's my favorite Call of Duty, by the way. Which one? War at War, you said? Or World of Warcraft? Oh, no, 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 no. World of Warcraft. Okay. I used to wear at war for Call of Duty. I was like, that's my favorite Call of Duty. Oh, no, no. I'd love to do Call of Duty. Actually, I just had an audition for the for the company that does a lot of the Call of Duty stuff. So I'm hoping. You know, and, and that's another thing too, uh, as an actor trying to get into, especially with video games, is motion capture. Yeah. I think we have it since I actually took a motion capture class a couple of years ago. And that was exciting and blew my mind. I and think that'd be well, fun to do that. Class was this was this wearing the mocap suit? Was this doing the mocap on the computer? What the second class I did? The first one was is 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 a, is a company called the Mocap Vaults here in LA, and an amazing teacher is uh, named Richard Dorton. He's known as the Mocap Man. If you played a video game, he's most likely been the motion capture actor for who the character you're doing. Um, he has done hundreds and hundreds, and and. Uh, now they're trying to get more people into it. Um, in fact, there's one game. Um, is it called Evolve? You play Evolve? I've heard of it. I heard it's really good yeah. too. There's like seven main characters. In all the cutscenes, Richard plays all the characters. Oh, that's cool. He he was the physical motion capture for all the acting in that, which meant that he had to remember where he went for each character so he wouldn't run into himself. Uh, it's amazing wow. stuff. So the first class was no no suits or like that. You know, we just learning. Some acting stuff, and then you know the technical. You know, you know there's T pose. You got to stand there so they get the T and all this stuff. But then I followed up with the guns and combat class, and that's where we got to be in the suits. Was it and fun? It was. It was. Um, it was fun. It was exhausting because that's like you know that's it was eight hours of running around with guns and learning how to snap people's necks and take them down safely. Um, learning how to leap on crash pads, and I'll tell you, you know. There's two kinds of motion capture, generally speaking. You have the the playable character motion capture, and that's where you know in game. That's the, the stepping, you know, moving forward in a crouch, standing up, you know, but forward, backward, 45, 45, 45, 45. That's where you're going to see all your stunt people and your martial artists and young people doing all that. Yeah. Uh, the cut scenes and the acting bits is where I want to go into. So the class I took. Um, because I was, you know, I, I'd been out of the gym for a while uh, due, to, due, due to my illness and stuff and gained 30 pounds. Um, but it was basically me and about 20 young people who are all fit and doing flips and martial arts and gymnastics and all this stuff. And then one other guy older like me, a little larger like me, and he looked at me and I looked at him and he said, Kevin, do you feel like a 50 pound sausage in a 10 pound casing? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. So let's get to the gym and let's slim down a little bit. But um, that's definitely something I, I really want to look into. Um, but going back to the World of Warcraft, it was four hours, you know, doing an orc and an old man. And then the last hour is just doing uh, um, death noises, basically. Like, you're an orc. Okay, I'm an orc. Okay, now you're an orc getting stabbed. Oh, I got stabbed. Okay, now you got stabbed with a spear that's on fire. Oh, it's on fire. You know, now it's a nice spear. Oh, it's cold. You know, so you just have to do that over and your throat is thrashed. And I mean, that's why uh, you may have, you know, there was a video game strike for 14 months last year. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because they were trying to get. Affected that uh, Life is Strange game. What's that? That actually affected the Life is Strange game. You had to get yeah. different voice actors. Different voice actors. You know, I kind of debate. I never looked into, you know, because I, I wasn't a union member at the time, but, you know, I didn't look into seeing if I could get work because it was seven big studios, you know. Um, but anyway, um, uh, uh, what was my point about that? I've already forgotten. It's <laughs> about getting old. Um, so, oh, yes. The world, so, you know, so, yeah, part of the reason of the strike was to try and get better working conditions just when you have to do all those death sounds and fight sounds that just destroy your throat. That was another thing, too, that I didn't know on motion capture sets at the time, I think this has changed, but that uh, they wouldn't have stunt coordinators on set. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, which is very odd, but then the studios apparently were saying, I think this is this is just hearsay I, I you know, from other voice actors who have worked more in motion capture, so let me preface by saying that, that I, I don't know all the exact details, but that some studios say, well, motion capture isn't acting, so we don't need to have a stunt coordinator. And it's like, but you're asking him to leap off this three-story platform into a big crash pad. Do you think that might need a stunt coordinator? Maybe, kind of thing. So, 
So there's a lot of changes in, in the market, but um, that's definitely an arena that I'm hoping to get into uh, this year a little bit more. Yeah, for folks that are joining us uh, a little late, this is toward the end. Um, this is Retro Reload. We are live. We've been live. So we've been here with Kevin M. Connolly uh, from uh, Ace Combat 7. Uh, he played uh, AWAX and a Bad drop, Dog. I say. Bad Dog. I wanted to say. Bad Dog. Was, for some reason, Bad Dog came in mind. I'm like, it's not Bad Dog. I like that name too. I, I, I was like, what does Bad Dog mean? Yeah. It's badass. It's like that hey, dog is not allowed in that plane anymore. Right, exactly. Right. Last time it was a big mess. Too much. To <laughs> right. We uh we had a, a new person drop in just toward the end. Uh, he uh I'll abbreviate your name. No disrespect intended, but he's a two liter J, and um he basically he he pointed out some really interesting things. Um, he noted that we're all bald. Yes. Yes. Well, I've, I've got, I'm letting it. I, I'm I'm treating myself. I'm just I, I've been shaving my head now for. Was two, eight years, and so I, I'm, I'm turning 45 on March 15th. I shouldn't say my age, so I'm letting it grow to see what it's like now, just to see it. I hate it. I feel like I'm at 60. Um, but yeah, hey, yeah I'm 30, and I have nothing on top anymore. So you should feel better then. So oh, he, right, there we go. He's asking, he's asking if we've ever rubbed bald heads together. To which yes. I say, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's being a bit tongue in cheek and trolling, but that's okay. I'll, I, I, I'll answer this one. I have had people just randomly come part of the reason that I wear the hat now is because it's really hilarious when like uh, you're, you know, um, when you visit somebody and you've been to their house and they have kids or whatever, and the kids only ever seen you with the hat. And right. the first time the hat comes off and there's no hair underneath it. I literally right. have kids be like, they've been like, just totally shocked, you know, like, Oh my goodness. They, what happened to your head? You know, um, other things that I've had happen is if I don't wear the hat, this has happened quite a few times people mm -hmm. will randomly come up to me and just start like oh i love it. like one person even this was weird i was at church hey. and someone came up and i thought it was my wife but somebody comes up and they started rubbing the top of my head and they kissed me what oh, they kissed no. me on the top of my skull uh and they're like <laughs> you. bless you i love bald men so much and i'm like okay i'm uh. also a married bald man but god bless you Right? There you go. It was it was kind of an older it was it was kind of like an older like it was a very motherly woman that did oh, okay. um but but still it was kind of it was kind of weird. So from that point forward I was like I'm I'm wearing a hat. Yeah, you know what I need to I need to pop on. I had something kind of similar almost. Well, I mean it's a just a, a, a trend if you don't mind me yapping away here still. Um so many years ago, I did a production of Midsummer Night's Dream with the San Antonio Symphony. And uh, great production, full symphony. And it was a Tex-Mex version. We had a great actor named Jesse Borrego, who used to be on Fame. He was on, uh, what's the Walking Dead spinoff? Um, Fear the Walking Dead. He was on that apparently recently. Great actor, great dancer. Um, so we did this production. And I was one of the young lovers at the time. And... We're at this huge auditorium um, called Majestic Theater in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why the director did this, but we did the um, the um, intermission break uh, when the lovers fall asleep, if you know the story. Um, and that which meant that we didn't have an opportunity to go off stage. So we fell asleep and we just laid there on the stage for the entire 10 minute intermission. So everybody could just look at us. And it just so happened that I had fallen to the front of the stage and my hand had fallen. It was my hand was kind of laying off the edge of the proscenium stage there. So yeah. we were hearing all people, you know, these little kids whispering like, oh, my gosh, are they really asleep? You know, and it's like, you know, oh, you know, there's they're good actors. They're right there. And then toward the end of it, my hand just kind of reflexed closed. And I realized that there was something in my hand all of a sudden. Right. And I was like, okay, someone just put something into my hand. Ooh. And then I remember I had to get up for the next scene. And, you know, we're, we're all standing around all the Kings, you know, people come in and they're talking and I looked down and someone had put in, it was wrapped, but one of those little Werther's uh, caramel candies in my hand. Wow. Uh, what, what is this? You know, it's my favorite candy, but you know, it that was, was original. So exactly. So the next night we had to have a couple security people just like, you know, don't touch the actors. They're sleeping right now. So that was that was <laughs> a little 
you know, and getting getting something out of nowhere from a stranger. Right, right. Jeremy, Jeremy, any any yes. weird stranger moments? Any any? Uh... Um, I usually call it a, I look like a skinhead just because. I'm a younger guy. I got to shave my head. Cause, like, there's nothing up here anymore. That's all gone. Like you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I got to go tea. So I tend to wear. Funny. When I first shaved my head and I went home for Christmas, my mom said, "Oh my God, Kevin, what are you doing? People will think you're a skinhead." I was like, "No, people will think I'm bald." I mean, where, where 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 do you get this idea? I mean, I'm half Mexican. I can't be a skinhead. What are you talking about? You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way. Right. You know? Um, you know, just come Professor X, you know, that's all yeah. I need. Because so. I've asked, like, why you shave your head? It's like, I'm literally bald. Well, it can't be that bad. I was like, no. It's I'm bad. Bald. Well, like I said, I mean, mine mine is is gone here, and I just feel like Same I here. look like, you know, hey, get off my lawn, you crazy, crazy. That's why I tell people, is, that's why I don't want, look 80 when I'm 30. Exactly. You know, I, 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 so, I, like I said, I'm just doing that. Well, I'm trying to do this just to my birthday. Yeah, and I'm shaving it all, but just to see where it's at. But I'm already hating it so much. Now, Jeremy, yeah, I got a couple days growth. Now, now, Jeremy, last time you saw Kevin, was that pre or post uh, transformation? It's probably when I was still losing the weight. Yeah, if I remember right. Oh, okay. I dropped so 250 that? pounds in a year. That's amazing, dude. Yeah, it's weighed 450. So, yeah, dude, that is awesome. What, what 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 was your journey like? What what were some of the things you did? Uh, I was real strict. I worked out twice a day, three times a day. Sometimes you know I did yeah. an hour cardio, weights, you know, stretching, sit ups, yeah. and chicken, veggies. That's all I ate for a solid year almost. That's amazing. No, I'm in the like 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 I said. So when I got diagnosed last year, um, it didn't take me. I, I let it get to me mentally and emotionally. A lot of emotional eating came in. So I gained about, I think I gained 40 pounds and I'm real close and I want to be like ready for Comic-Con this year. Um, so I feel like I'm back at my gym pretty hardcore uh, at Nerd Strong. And I'm also doing the zombie run training app. And then I got with my nutritionist. I, I haven't seen her in a while. I do need to go talk to her because I'm, I'm to see if, if having cancer has changed any dietary needs. That's something I haven't researched yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, I've heard some people it does and some doesn't. So I've, I've got to find that out, but that is amazing. Like I'm on the keto thing right now and intermittent fasting. Yeah. And that's really getting nice and challenging. Now, um, if you're interested, Kevin, uh, in Anaheim on March 23rd, it's called a foam glow run. I'll be there. If you want to come join me, dude, I'll tell you my knees hurt so bad right now. I don't know if I could, I'll, I'll cheer you on from the sidelines. How about that? Um, he's, he's like, Jeremy, I got a corn dog for you. I got a corn dog right over here. You know? <laughs> Just grab it while it's run by. Screw it's it. Crazy. It's almond flour around it. That's what they, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, be, he'll, he'll uh, be. That, that is fantastic, my friend. That is congratulations to Actually, you. Actually, I, I have an idea. I have an idea, Jeremy. Like, you uh, could, and, and Kevin, you don't have to do this. Um, although, right. you know, let, let's talk offline about your hourly rate, and I, I might just pay you to do this. Um, but, uh, hey. you know, Jeremy, Jeremy running that uh, running that race with you in his ear, right? Uh, we'll have him call you on the phone, and you can be like, "I don't care if you die." There you go. Come on, now. Bad dog again. come on, trigger. you're expendable out there. Yeah, you're you're expendable. Expendable. You, think, you think winning the race is going to do you any good? You're not coming home. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that honestly. For me, like he's a dick. Oh, like, I know it's great. Yeah. That would be that would be pretty awesome, dude. Actually, job and shut up. <laughs> That's how Bando talked to Trigger and the rest of the guys, though. That yes, is awesome. it is. That is awesome. Well, but it's real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I'm a huge Ace Combat fan. The last going I thought was back in 2006 is Ace Combat Zero, and I'm extremely happy with what they did because Assault Great. Horizon was bad. Trigger, uh, not Trigger, um, Infinity Infinite was bad because it was a multiplayer game. But this one was a true Ace Combat game, and I think. Van Dynaco did a fantastic job on this game. Awesome. I'm very happy. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. Like I said, I'm gonna start posting on social media that I'm in it. I hope I'm glad that you had a great time. That you've already beat it, apparently. And, twice. and twice, <laughs> twice. Third, third time's a charm. And yeah. uh hopefully I can book some more that uh that you'll all love, you know. So absolutely. And we look forward to uh to following you on that journey. You're always you're always welcome back on the show. We have a great time when you're on and we cover a variety of surprising topics. Well, like I said, we as we talked before, uh um it uh I would I'm definitely down for a a 
Marvel versus DC Cinematic Universe movies conversation. I've got a, an opinion or two. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Maybe we'll even do something like uh maybe we'll even do like our own mock, like, you know, pit this character against this character and who oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sadly, yeah. I kind of joined that because like I'm not a superhero guy, so I just sit there looking stupid. You sit there and watch, yeah. All right. Like who the hell is that? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like you see superheroes I've never heard of. All I, uh, the big thing I just really care about right now with Disney buying Fox is uh, my God, they could just do a decent Fantastic Four film. Um, and I want to see Deadpool in the X-Men universe uh, yeah. uh, 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 with the with the Avengers, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. I would not mind. I'd be okay if they kept the current uh, X-Men cast and crew. That'd be to- I'd be totally fine with that. Uh, yeah. If they decide to reboot it, no matter what Marvel does with it when they get it back, I'm pretty sure yeah. they fantastic I, I was really skeptical honestly about spider-man um i get that i get they, that they totally as far as i'm concerned they totally nailed it i think it was a it was a smart move to not not go back to backstory again and just kind of jump ahead um yeah but uh but anyway yeah i we could fill a whole other episode with that so i won't get too far oh. anything. but um i did want to tell our folks in the chat that were with us uh for a while thank you so much uh, in fact uh, Sonia, I want to say again, congratulations. She graduated on January 9th. Um, so now, congratulations. She, yes, she's our, uh, I believe she follows us from, oh gosh, I'm going to get Korea, it. Korea, I think. Korea. I think she follows us from Korea. Nice. She was working really hard on, on finishing up school and she did. So, she graduated. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Good job there. Uh, Two Liter J um, has quite an extensive collection. Uh, everything from the uh, the Wii and the original Xbox to the PS4. Oh, nice. Yeah, plays a lot of games. Everything from Saints Row to The Witcher to Elder Scrolls. So pretty good. I'm, I'm watching his, uh, you know, looking at all the games that he listed that he plays. And I'm like, wow, that's like top 10 material right there. So, uh, and he says that today's his birthday. So he's 19 years old. Happy 19th. Birthday. Hey, d- d- does he play League of Legends? Yeah, do you play League of Legends? So let us know in the chat. Um, but I did want to say to Leader J, uh, serious note, if um, if you didn't catch us talking earlier about checking yourself for testicle cancer, yes. yeah, definitely scroll scroll back a little bit to earlier in the show. I know it's kind of a weird why are people in video games talking about it. It's a serious topic. Um, yeah. Kevin, short version, he was watching Deadpool. It came with a little card that was kind of tongue-in-cheek saying, here's the four steps to check yourself. He did it for the hell of it, found out he actually had testicular cancer, but was able to – he found it so early, he was able to go get it cleared up and um, you know, had some surgery and got it all taken care of. So um, it's a serious topic. If you don't know what we're talking about, you are of the age where you should probably figure that kind of – you know, go find some resources and and – Make sure at least once a month, um, take care of it. It could save your life. Honestly. So, and the rest of you folks, I hope that you enjoyed our time with Kevin. I hope you learned a bit. You might've learned something that maybe helps you out, maybe saved your life. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, got a bit of an inside peek into, uh, what it's like to make a, uh, a game. Yeah. And some of the secrecy surrounding yes. the game. Yes. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and, we might have him back on sometime, uh, sometime to talk about uh, Marvel versus DC. I, anytime, I'd love to come back. This has been a lot of fun. I, I love doing stuff like this. So, Jeremy, last chance. Any final questions? Buy his comment, Sam. It's amazing. That's all. That's all I got to say about today. We're good on questions. <laughs> all right, folks. Tune in next time. Okay, I, I'd like to do one thing real quick. Oh yeah. Do you have anything you need or want to shout out? Yeah. If just, uh, um, I'm trying to build up the whole social media thing. So if people want to follow me, um, I'm at Kevin M Connolly, uh, on Twitter, Instagram, um, Tumblr, I believe, which I use as kind of a blog on my website. My voiceover website is 315studio.net. Um, and then, uh, actually on my Twitter, I have a little link tree page. So all my social medias are on there. Uh, I'm on discord, uh, I'm on, uh, if you guys play Xbox, I'm a terrible gamer, but I'm trying to play more games. So if you need somebody to run around saying, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to shoot something. Um, I'm Kevin Darkmoon on Xbox. Um, I'm Kevin Darkmoon on steam as well. 
uh, feel free to say hello. And uh, thanks to these guys for letting me come and uh, chat uh, a little bit. And uh, I hope to talk to everybody soon again. I'm definitely adding you on the Xbox tonight. Sweet. Okay, cool. All right, folks. Take care. Good night.